before Karma Kingdom, we were thinking of the console platform as well as the PC platform. And we thought about, uh, you know, ways of bringing uh, similar, you know, content on those platforms. Mm -hmm. But given what the economy was, uh, you know, and, and the amount of time and financial resources it takes to develop a console or a PC game, you know, a reasonably good console or PC game, uh, we chose to focus on this emerging trend. So two years ago when I kind of moved to Los Angeles, you know, I discovered that social gaming market is, is, a, is a reasonably, uh, you know, available market. It's a fast growing market and it's an exciting market that really allows us to address a very broad demographic. So with Karma Kingdom, we wanted to address the Indian diaspora on one hand, because you know, whatever 27, 30 million Indians there are, but we wanted the story and the content to be interesting enough for a, for a global uh, audience as well. So everything that you see in Karma Kingdom uh, will appeal both to the Indian diaspora, obviously, because we have the Indian mythology wrapper. But when you look at the gameplay, it will be equally fascinating as well as appealing. Uh, have, when we looked at Karma Kingdom uh, or the social gaming space, as you know, there are very, very big players out in the market. So we had to kind of ensure that though we are a young and a startup company, that we are in a position to compete uh, and differentiate. So we differentiated on the technology front, on the business front, and on the demographic front. On the technology front, for example, we have a day and night cycle. No other game has a day and night cycle within social games. So we have enabled that. We have, um, instead of the grid-based system, which you are very familiar with in Farmville, we have, you know, a circular, you know, it's a free flow, a circular kind of uh, footprint. Uh, which allows you to place in any any area uh, across on the on the island. Uh, we chose to have a deed system, for example, where any good deed that you do for the day, uh, you are able to uh, communicate and share uh, with a friend. So, example, if I helped somebody, uh, you know, I donated some books to the library, and I was with a friend, uh, let's say uh, X Y Z. If I go into the game and say that today's good deed, I donated some books to the library, I get 100 goodwill points. But I said that when I did this, I was with, let's say, Akash. And Akash confirms that, yes, Ashok indeed uh, donated these books, I would get 400 uh, goodwill points. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer next level of interaction in the social platform, which I think is is a, is a unique way to bring, uh, you know, uh, consciousness to what we are doing. So rather than having just a lot of friends, um, perhaps not even knowing half of them, what we are doing is to create that next level of interaction uh, within the players. So that's on the, on the technical front. On the business front, as I told you, we want to address the Indian diaspora, for which there really have not been any significant original IP games as well as the, you know, the general demographic. So with Karma Kingdom, I think we are able to do that because of the way the game is structured. And then the third aspect on the business side, the link to charity and the fact that everything we do for Karma Kingdom is for a cause and allows us to create awareness uh, for different types of charities itself is a great starting point. So we want to shift from what I would call a CSR platform which is at corporation, at the corporate level, to what we call a PSR, a personal uh, social responsibility platform, which every Facebook player, every individual is able to, you know, uh, participate in. In a, in a, in a, in a manner, uh, in the, in the, in the, at the lowest level, you just become aware. And becoming aware is a very important part. Mind share has to happen before you get market share. So we want to influence the minds. So, to summarize, I would like to say that the experience of playing Karma Kingdom is almost, uh, is, can be compared with med meditation on, on positive living. Because in Karma Kingdom, when you play the game, all you are doing is thinking about others. All you are doing is saying that, how will I make a difference? How will I make my citizens happy? So that thinking, even 20 minutes a day, is a very positive, hopefully relaxing kind of a uh, experience as compared to playing other games which are exciting 
but then it creates and invokes uh, different kinds of emotions within 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 the player. So we want to kind of steer or balance the the gameplay and the experience such that it has a positive <coughs> impact on the on the people on the players uh, at, with their choice. Nothing is imposed, right? Nothing is obvious. I have a high level idea. Uh, so we are looking at 50% of our players today are from India. The balance 50% are coming from US, uh, uh, Canada, uh, UK, South Africa, and we have Turkey, we have Norway, we have the Middle East, we have South Africa, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore. Mm -hmm. So all the areas, wherever there is a prolific, let's say, Facebook presence, you know, we have had people try out the game, okay. and and now we expect to see the 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 balance uh, kind of tilt towards. It will be mostly U.S. and India. I would imagine would be the two major you know focus or 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 demo. Karma Kingdom. We have had it on the market for about eight weeks now. So it was the pilot launch was about eight to ten weeks ago, mm -hmm. but only last week or rather the last few days is when we took some of the initial feedback that we got from uh, the uh, from our players. Uh, we made all those changes, incorporated some new features, and now I would say is what Karma Kingdom is, where we would like to see it as phase one of the game. Uh, before this, it was more of a of a pilot kind of because. The, in these games, there is nothing like a, a final product. Unlike a PC or a console game, this is an evolving game. And we keep in mind what our players are looking for, and we are able to enhance and add to that uh, as, we, as we go along. And therefore, uh, Karma Kingdom uh, will, will keep expanding uh, as, as, uh, as we get more and more feedback. But right now, I think it's, it's reached a stage which we are happy with. So the way it will be is that rather than, you know, today, you, as you know, the virtual goods market uh, maybe is around one and a half billion dollars or so uh, on a worldwide basis. And it's expected to grow to five billion dollars over the next, uh, you know, three, four years. So it's going to grow very rapidly. The point we want to make is that rather than spending money uh, to buy virtual goods um, uh, and pixels, which really have served no purpose, uh, you would rather spend that money uh, to to kind of really do good in the real world, you know, uh, through the virtual goods that you buy. So you are right. There is, you know, you buy a virtual hospital, but you are buying a virtual Sankara hospital. And therefore, the contribution for Sankara, therefore, you know, the money that you spend there is now going directly to, to Sankara. So yes, there is a virtual goods uh, component, but here the idea is that the money that's spent is actually going to serve a purpose. There's a social cause attached to it. So Karma Kingdom is a game with a cause uh, that you know is a very important part of, of the design when we looked at Karma Kingdom. We launched the game as a pilot, right? We had no charity. So a lot of questions we got was with charity. Though we could have said, oh, it doesn't matter because it will go to charity. People wanted to know what charity it is. So it's only last week that we had this tie up with Sankara. And I think that the real purpose, you know, connection now starts from here onwards. So there is no direct, you know, uh, I would say um, uh, influence or, or contribution from a charity perspective yet. But we will see that change dramatically. And we are also, as I said, since we have just launched, the awareness, the visibility part is just getting started. And as we see, the, as you know, in this, in this business, only about 2% of players actually would ultimately spend some money. And, and that's a small percent. In India, it will be even maybe smaller than 2%, so, which is all right. Uh, we believe that balance between India and the US and the fact that somebody sitting in, in Norway will learn about the Sankara I Foundation and could choose to make a difference is what we want to enable through this platform. So it's a social platform that is not just a gaming platform. It will be a platform that extends into the real world in a manner that is hopefully a